Welcome to Marseille and the start of a huge day of international football here on ESPN. Alongside Robbie Musto, I'm Adrian Healy. France and Argentina are genuine world heavyweights, Robbie, but it's the presence on the bench tonight of one Diego Maradona that gives this game its extra magnetic attraction. Uh, it certainly does. A true legend of the game. In many people's eyes, the best player ever to have played this game. But coaching is a different story. It's the second game in charge tonight, but it does have an excellent squad of players to work with. Yes, so voted the greatest player of the 20th century. De de buscar en ese plantel el mejor equipo para para encarar los partidos eliminatorios con Venezuela y Bolivia. Y jugamos contra el subcampeón del mundo. No es un partido internacional, este es un partido donde, donde seguramente se, se verá, se verá eh, eh, en un cuarto de final de cualquier Copa del Mundo. Well, as for Maradona's successor as best player in the world, Robbie, he just happens to wear an Argentina shirt as well. Yes, Leo Messi, magnificent footballer, same fantastically naturally gifted player as Maradona and a real genius on the football pitch, that's for sure. Part of a Barcelona side who are well represented here tonight. Messi will go up against his teammate in Thierry Henry as well. It's the Stade Velodrome. The atmosphere is likely to be vibrant, electric, shall we say. Argentina against France coming up. Full team news and the first half kickoff. Well, welcome back. Your sense of timing is immaculate. The Stad Velodrome is our setting tonight. France taking on Argentina as we uh, launch into a massive night of uh, international football on ESPN. Of course, the United States against Mexico to come up later on in a game that really means something in World Cup qualifying. Nothing at stake here tonight, Robbie, except pride. And also, of course, huge interest on both sides of the ball, particularly on the Argentine side with that man involved. Yeah, I think so. I think it's a big game, actually, for both nations. They haven't been doing particularly well in the World Cup qualification, and they both really need to get back on track. And what an occasion. Two very, very good teams, great players. I'm hoping for a really open and entertaining match. Yes, yeah, so and for two genuine world superpowers, they really meet uh, fairly rarely. This is uh, just the 11th time they've met. They only ever met twice in that competitive football. The uh, pre-match national anthems. from Argentina and it'll be swiftly followed by a rendition of La Marseillaise.
bit of extra gusto for La Marseillaise in the Mediterranean port city of Marseille. The first time the French national team have played a game here in nearly nine years. And what a game. Argentina with Diego Maradona at the helm. The visitors. And that means Messi. It means Aguero. It means Mascherano. It means so many delicious things to look forward to, Robbie. Well, it does. And also, you've got to look at the France team as well. They've got good forward players there. Nicolas Anouk has got the start. We're expecting Karim Benzema to play up front. Frank Ribéry, very, very talented player on the right-hand side. Thierry Henry scoring plenty of goals for Barcelona. So, themselves, a very good attacking side. Yes, Karim Benzema is the man to miss out tonight in Raymond Domenech's selection with Nicolas and Nelka preferred. But Johan Gorku for another man to mention, Robbie. The number eight has been in splendid form for Bordeaux. Jonas Eriksson from Sweden. And a couple of uh, Swedish assistants are our officiating crew tonight. And for Argentina, a couple of uh, minor surprises perhaps tonight. Uh, Maxi Rodriguez and Jonas Gutierrez will play on the flanks, which means no starting place for Carlos Tevez. Yeah, a little surprise again. And I thought as well that Messi would be played on that right-hand side where he's used to playing for Barcelona. But I think, yes, he will play up front there, just in behind Kun Aguero. One Pablo Carrizo winning just his eighth cap in goal for the Argentines. Diego Maradona taking charge of just his second game. Argentina winning his first game in Glasgow against Scotland back in November by a goal to nil. And this, in fact, is his 100th day in charge and for the Argentines. A surprise appointment. Perhaps not many people saw it coming after Alfilo Basile's resignation back in October. And this real test for his side who as Robbie mentioned uh, uh, struggling a little in South American World Cup qualifying they're currently third by trailing leaders Paraguay by some seven points France uh, are in the middle of a real struggle themselves to qualify for South Africa in 2010 they trail uh, Serbia and Lithuania by five points Moment of silence before kickoff. Science for Argentine executive uh, Antilio de Papa, who just uh, passed away this morning. They're all set for action now. And the Stad Velodrome, which was uh, sold out uh, well in advance of this game. 60,000 capacity. And a rare trip by the uh, French national team to play here. Of course, the uh, Stade de France has been their home since World Cup 1998. Johan Gorkov wearing number eight for the French. He's the man who'll be pulling the strings in midfield for them. And so much attacking firepower on both sides of the pitch to look forward to, Robbie. Yeah, I think tactically they're going to be uh, very similar as well in their layout and the formation, both playing with the back four. Both playing with two holding midfield players, and then the four players in front of them will have license to roam around, but basically a 4-4-2, really, both teams. So the Argentines in their traditional light blue and white, the black shorts get us underway, going from right to left. Their last meeting was actually only two years ago, a friendly in Paris, which was won for Argentina by a goal from Javier Saviola. French, as we mentioned, labouring in World Cup qualifying. Their coach, Raymond Dominic, under all sorts of pressure in his homeland. This is Eric Abidal. Both goalkeepers will be uh, a point of interest tonight, both relatively young and relatively in inexperienced. Steve Mandanda playing on his home ground, performing those duties for France. Yeah, 
much. So we need to talk about defending players as well, because it might just be the team that comes out on top in this game. It's the defence that handles the opposition attackers the best. And France certainly have conceded goals in qualification so far. And haven't looked too solid back there. This is Gorkouf on from Ribéry to Bakary Sanya, the Arsenal fullback. Gorkouf as France dominate the early possession, and that was just a whisker away from Nicolas Anelka. Well, Gorkouf getting involved, drifting out to the right hand side, plays a good ball in towards the back post. Nicolas Anelka just drifting between the centre back and the right back. Just a little bit too high for him though. Anelka preferred to Karim Benzema, to the surprise of some in Marseille. Says getting his first tackle in on Sergio Aguero. Be the Aguero and Messi combination up front. Both of them so prolific in Spain recently for their club sides, but can they click for the national side? Zanetti so down the line, Maxi Rodriguez. Gago, where the number five shirt, traditionally the deep lying playmaker for Argentina, always wears the number five. Milino Papa on the near side, winning just his second cap tonight. Martin Di Michaelis, the Bayern Munich stalwart at centre back. inside for Messi trying to get that mesmeric dribbling going and nearly doing so took a couple of French defenders to knock him off his stride that's the first time he's come inside he's actually started on the right hand side where I thought he might and Maxi Rodriguez is more on a narrow midfield role almost like a 4-5-1 or 4-3-3 you'll see I'm sure Messi's going to have license to drift anywhere he wants to try and pick the ball up Example of his quick feet, he can just shuffle the ball between those feet, keep control, keep possession for his team. At times, Robbie, it seems as though the ball is actually tied to his feet with an invisible cord. Yeah, and there's it's such an incredible talent that he's got. And I, I remember Sidney said Dan having that type of quality as well, where you almost feel that the ball is part of his body, so fluid in the movement between the feet. Zinedine Zidane considered a a son of the city, Marseille, even though he never actually played here professionally. It's really uh, Zidane's retirement that continues to rumble on from France. They haven't quite been the same side, have they, since Zidane hung up his boots after World Cup 2006? Yeah, I think there's other players as well, Robert Perez and some of the Patrick Vieira's injured now, and just lost some of those real top players they had a few years ago. Stagnation, perhaps, for the French. We had an awful Euro 2008, you might remember. Just uh, one point for them. And an early trip home. Oh, a wrestling match in the centre of the park. It's, uh, Messi who was sent sprawling by Diara. Well, I think we might see this a few times tonight. Osama Diara is the holding midfield player, he's the man to try and protect the back four. Messi's going to drift inside into his area. It's really quickly taken, this is Papa. Gorkov there to intervene though, and Ribéry, who uh, is a real crowd favourite here. The ex-Marseille winger, Frank Ribéry, with Bayern Munich. In with Real Madrid. I sometimes think that's a little bit unlucky. Handball's got to be intentional. It just, it's got to hang his arm somewhere, and the ball struck his arm that time, but it's a free kick for Argentina. But on the tackling, I like to see that. It's a frame, but plenty of passion, and tackles flying in. You know there's going to be serious business out there. Now the free kick bent towards the far post, Mandandelo with a very safe pair of hands. 
Marseille goalkeeper who kept a clean sheet just uh, this past weekend as Marseille beat Bordeaux in a big French league game here. The attack still alive for Argentina. Thierry Henry helping out his defence, but Zanetti picking it up once more. And there's a covering midfield player just again intercepting the ball. Leo Messi gave it away a couple of times, and quickly won back. This is composure again. Here's the cleverness. Just couldn't get enough purchase on the shot. Take it past the keeper. Well, Dominic, the French coach said this would be a friendly that is not a friendly. By that, Robbie, he probably meant this uh, wanting his players to be fully competitive as if it were World Cup qualifying points that are at stake. Well, I think the way this team's playing in qualification, he needs this to be a, a full steam French performance. They haven't been playing well, they need to gain some confidence, and if they can get a win here against a great Argentinian side, they should hold them in good stead for the upcoming qualifiers. Now, Thierry Henry. Season he's been having with Barcelona. Many people had written him off. Bakri Sanya stared down by Gutierrez. No chip delivery uh, came to nothing from Toulalan. Zanetti with his hands full. Abidal seeing to that. Abidal's hands were a little too full. Well, just fantastic experience play there from Zanetti. Got himself in a bit of a corner. Here he is protecting the ball with his body. Very, very strong. In great condition. He's 35 years of age. Javier Zanetti's had a magnificent career. Very reliable type of player. And playing midfield or right back as he's playing tonight. Yeah, Zanetti, the... Uh... Record caps winner for Argentina, winning his 129th. Ten minutes gone at the Stad Velodrome. So glad you could join us this afternoon. First big FIFA international date of the 2009 calendar year. Of course, World Cup qualifying gets underway and all continues in other parts of the world, including the big. US-Mexico game to come later on tonight as the cross arrives for Anelka. Away, but only half away from Einza, and it's sat up invitingly for Thierry Henry. Well, again, ball from Ribery into the centre. One-on-one -on -one there, Anelka almost gets to it. Falls nicely for Thierry Henry, and you expect him to hit the target from there. Just got underneath the ball a little bit, but again, trying to find Anelka from the cross. Good look at uh, Juan Pablo Carrizo. In just his eighth cap, as I mentioned, it. she recently dropped by his club side, Lazio, after a 4 1 defeat to Cagliari. Now, Ribery. Dispossessed by Gago. And he, in turn, loses out to Tulala. Tulalan taking it on, Henri. Trying to connect with Nicholas Anelka. It's not even going to be a corner, though. Well, almost very inventive play from Thierry Henry. He knows he's there, just trying to back it into the path of Anelka. Just slightly behind him. It's interesting, Adrian, because both sides like to play football. Passing the ball to feet. Interesting, either side really hasn't managed to control the game or to... Certainly that midfield area. Hotly contested in there. And that the ball finding its way to Gorkuf. Gago picking up the pieces for Argentina. And a pass right to the feet of Messi. There's Abidal, his club teammate, isolated, and the cross took an initial flick. But it didn't deceive Mandanda. 
Well, this is where you don't want to see him running at you. Into the 18-yard box there. Not a great ball from him, but it was a wonderful ball from Fernando Gago to pick out Leo Messi on that right-hand side. It's a nervy touch from Bacardi Sanya. Jonas Gutierrez has latched onto it. Saving tackle from Philip Mexes. Yeah, Sanya doing his best to get back, but it is a good challenge from the central defender. Comes across to sniff out the danger. Clean tackle, going to ground, but he wins the ball. And gets a goal kick out of it. Jonas Gutierrez, who moved over the summer to Newcastle United in England. by Einze. Extremely competitive in the centre of the park again. Gorkuf is the fulcrum. And now Thierry Henry will play it out. There is a player down and needing some attention. Looks like Lionel Messi. It's a big jump, isn't it, from Gabriel Einze? Very determined, strong defender. He's okay. Messi winning his 35th cap tonight. Now, World Cup qualifying points at stake tonight in Columbus. The United States and Mexico as the CONCACAF hexagonal gets underway. Our coverage beginning at 7 p.m. And in fact, we've got a poll question for you. Quite simply, who's going to win tonight? Mexico or the US? Let us know. Go to ESPNSoccerNet.com. This is Lasana Diara. Finding Ribéry. Gorkov is in the middle of everything at the moment for France. But that's a cross. Just, uh, away by Gabriel Einstein. In fact, Argentina turning defence into attack very efficiently. Aguero and Messi on the move. This is Messi. He's charted a path through the goal. And a shot that was blocked by William Gallas. Well, it just looked like he'd made the space. He was through the middle. He just tried to flick it with the outside of his left foot to stick it into the corner. But let's give credit to William Gallas. Excellent intercepting challenge there. But a, what a fast break it was from Argentina. Well, Maradona was off his bench. He thought Messi was slowing his way through the goal there. <laughs> Messi involved in the next passage of play as well. He's refusing to play the simple pass. He's just taking his time, he knows he's got two men on him. Just has that composure to get his head up and find a man. You know, it's said about Messi and Maradona that uh, they didn't uh, try the impossible once, they always tried the impossible. I just think there's similar type of players where you don't think it's possible and they end up doing it. Particularly out of tight spaces, Leo Messi is such a, a short player, low centre of gravity. Here's a break again, Aguero then makes a run across, creates a space there for Leo Messi. I just fancied him there to stick it in the other corner, just tried the early strike. Very left-sided, isn't he? Hasn't got a tremendously powerful right-foot shot. Good work from Sergio Aguero. Now digging in, Ribéry. Has a stomach for a, a physical battle. And that Gago is the victim on this occasion. It might have been Tulalan who caught him. Well, again, it's the, the battle in the centre of the pitch. Argentina with three players in there. Just goes to ground there. Tulalan catches Gago. Picks up the yellow card for it. Tulalan, an integral part of. Uh, the French champions of Lyon. They're at seven consecutive championships they've won here. And Maradona 
Messi's uh, negotiating skills uh, came to the fore just to get Messi to be part of this game. He's actually not supposed to play in friendlies under his arrangement with Barcelona. And this was deemed to be something too special to miss. He's trying his very best back at his sang here to get down this right-hand side. Loves to go forward, we see it all the time when he plays for Arsenal. He's caught up that time, he gave a free kick away. We're only a couple of weeks, weeks away, rather, from the return of the Champions League. First knockout round, and plenty the players involved tonight will be involved in Lyon against Barcelona, one of the offerings for you here on ESPN. First leg at the Stade Gerland. Nothing much to choose between the sides <coughs> so far, Robbie. Anything in particularly <coughs> catching your eye in terms of the individuals out there? Not particularly. I'm just impressed with the way it's a competitive game. We've seen plenty of challenges. We've seen little flashes from the front players. Not too much as yet. It's fairly cagey, actually. A lot of the game's been fought in that mid middle third of the football pitch. With just the odd breakaway and the odd chance, half chances, really. Gorkov continuing to contest every inch of that midfield territory. Diara likewise. And he's done well to big out Gorkov. And now Ribery. Some space to work with. Help arriving too. Ribery decided to deliver the cross himself. The best attacking moves have come from the right hand side with Frank Ribery and Bakir Sanger as well. I've seen less of Thierry Henry on the left hand side and Eric Abidal. Rivaldo! Rivaldo! Yeah, yeah. Who was uh, injured during Euro 2008 game against Italy? It took a while to recover from that. Twenty minutes gone in Marseille, a city where more than anywhere else in France they love their football. Zanetti and Maxi Rodriguez combining. And no way through thanks to Eric Abidal. And now suddenly Henri turns on the Jets. And in a flash, he's to the halfway line. Continues his run as well. But he can't outfox Martin Di Michaelis. Well, that's a good run from him. I remember a few years ago when I used to play against him in the Premiership, he was very, very quick. Just lost a little bit of speed. He's still got that acceleration. But I was expecting him to really open his legs then and, and take it past the last defender. Di Michaelis it was who came across with the covering challenge. France's leading all-time goal scorer Thierry Henry has scored 48 times for his country. It's five more than the great Michel Platini. Russia blood to the head from Emiliano Papa, the man winning just his second cap. Plays in Argentina with Vélez Sarsfield. <laughs> Ribery dispossessing Messi. Gorkov given a second chance. And Diara. Quite get the weight right on the delivery. That's a shame. It's a good little spell from France. Johan Gorkas becoming more and more influential. Again, very quick art nature to get close on Leo Messi. Ribery this time taking the ball from him. Diego Maradona, who nearly joined at the club that play in this stadium, Olympic Marseille, almost 20 years ago to the day. They thought they had him, and he stayed with Napoli. Fascinating scenario, isn't it? Him being the national team coach. I think you know he's going to gain the respect of the players. Surely going to be highly motivated to play for that man. 
But it's the tactical part that really is, surely is going to be the question marks. If his team are 1-0 down, say, with 10 minutes to go, can he make the changes? Has he got that in his armory? Only a couple of years coaching experience. We'll find that out. As you mentioned, he passed his first test, which was a victory against Scotland. In Glasgow. It's by a goal to nil. Maxi Rodriguez scored the first goal. Maradona Rain, it's his pass now that finds Aguero. He looked to have been bundled over on the halfway line, but no foul. Next says, picking out Sanya, took it in mid-air. Michaelis intervening. Still the attack alive here for the French. Gorkov settling. Oh, it's popped out to Nicholas Anelka. Well, it would have done. They're not being for Gabriel Einzet, but the pressure's still on. And it results in a corner. Well, again, just managing to sustain attacks now, France. Just taken over a little bit, controlling the midfield area, finding the lights of Ribéry and Gorkov in particular. Been effective so far. They look a little bit nervy, don't they, at the back, Argentina? And it'll be Ribéry. Ask the question from the corner. It was answered with a, a deft header away. Gabriel lines it. Coming up with the goods, but Aguero losing out to Lasana Diara. He simply flew into the tackle. Yeah, what a challenge that was. Diara's there, trying to pick up the pieces again. Gutierrez having his say. And finally, some relief comes for the Argentines. They have to dig in a little bit, aren't they? The likes of Gutierrez and Rodriguez having to come back and help out. There's that challenge from Lasana Diara. Going to ground, but comfortably wins the ball. Rodriguez and Zanetti tandem on the far side but to, to no avail Diego Maradona box off his goal wherever he goes in the world there has been some thought Robbie that his presence will absorb a lot of the limelight and allow his players more freedom to do what they do well I don't know about that I think the uh, I think when the players get on the pitch they're not bothered really about who's talking about who they want to do their job on there some wonderful players he has to work with, that's the thing. Talked much about Sergio Aguero, the striker tonight. Wonderfully talented player, again, a young player, only 20 years of age. Excellent young players coming out of Argentina, particularly attack-minded ones. Jonas Gutierrez is there to intervene as Toulalan tried to instigate something for the French. Now it's Messi doing the same, Aguero's touch, just letting him down. I think what the French are doing well, you know, in these first 25, 26 minutes, they're not allowing any really of the Argentinian players to settle on the ball. Very quick to close down, winning the ball back and using it well themselves. Gorkov is the fulcrum again. Sanya's cross! It's delivered with real precision. Once again, the Argentina defence up trumps, Mascherano just putting the uh, clamps down on Ribery. It's going to be a Mascherano. It was here at the Stad Velodrome in September with Liverpool in the Champions League. They beat Marseille by two goals to one. Moving here, interchanging the passing while Gorkov involved again. It's a similar pattern, goes into to him, goes back out to the right hand side, and then excellent crosses they've made into the centre. Now, World Cup qualifying in other parts of the globe, but match is already completed in Australia. Themselves an excellent draw in Japan, also a draw between Iran and South Korea. A victory for Bahrain against mighty Uzbekistan. Gorkov. 
Tulala, funneled from left to right. Diara. Ribery caught in possession, but Argentina finding it difficult at the moment to really get out of their own half. Well, they are, and that's uh, all credit to France. They're not allowing the likes of Messi, Aguero, Gutierrez to get on the ball. They're under pressure, they're on the back foot. France really now need to create something. They've had a couple of balls into the box, but nothing really created yet. Carrizo, the keeper of Argentina, hasn't really had to work too much so far. Einzer. Now Gutierrez. Able to turn, but out of sync with Emiliano Papa on this near side. But again, though, it was pressured. He was pressured into making the mistake, not being allowed to settle, picking up the loose balls here with Diara. Now Gorkov has Anelka away. This is Nicholas Anelka for France. He's denied by Carito. The Argentine keeper to the rescue. Well, there's the chance I talked about. Very nicely created as well. Just a quick break through the centre. Gorkov it was with a wonderfully weighted ball through to Anelka, who really should have scored. France have been plugging away, haven't they, for just that sort of opportunity. It's a relatively simple construction when it arrived, just one quick through ball from Gorkov doing the damage. Well, it was a throw, wasn't it? I think they had a quick throw in. The ball through to Gorkov and a wonderful ball through to the striker. Just getting a little bit heated in there now, Mascherano. Maybe the first signs of frustration from him and his side. Oh, two fiery competitors there in Lasana Diara and Javier Mascherano. Diara, as I mentioned, just moved, recently moved to Real Madrid. They've only conceded one goal in six games since he made the move to the Bernabeu. Well, such an important part of any team is that central midfield player, defensive minded one, just in front of those central defenders. They work across, protecting them. slipped as he delivered that half an hour gone in Marseille France closest to the breakthrough so far and on the move again with Anelka and Di Michaelis with uh, that thou shalt not pass mentality that's fantastic defending and the composure as well to pick out a teammate in the midfield area French throw. Les Bleus in the ascendancy at the moment, but can they make it count? A low effort which uh, Carrizo does uh, well to smother. Oh, just a snapshot, wasn't it? Just bounced in front of the goalkeeper. It made it look a little bit awkward. But he answered his first big test tonight, Robbie, didn't he? We did question perhaps his confidence having been dropped by Lazio. with a point to prove tonight. It's knocked off by Thierry Henry and just a snapshot from the distance here on the corner of the box. Just need to try and get into a rhythm, Argentina. Try and get some passes going, find some players in some little pockets of space. Just struggling to find any, aren't they? Good pressure, good shape from the French. Rodriguez this time. Other scores to bring you. Uruguay beating Libya by three goals to two. That game played in Tripoli. And Chile leading South Africa at the moment by two goals to nil. Now Gorkov pushing on Ribery. Mascherano in close attendance. Gorkov's just acting really is the link man, isn't he? Just in behind the now, he's seen plenty of the ball. Ribery spinning away beautifully from his man, and the left-footed effort is geared towards the near post. Well, good skills on the edge of the box, never really made good contact with the ball. He 
just smothered it a little bit. Just his foot around the outside of the ball, a little bit too much. He took the power off. Comfortable save for Caliso. France at the moment, Robbie, not looking like the side who have struggled in the early stages of World Cup qualifying. That defeat to Austria back in September. And he drew against Romania. Four points out of nine for them so far. Yeah, this is just what they need, really. You can just see how highly motivated the players are, though. Just even the last section of play there, the closing down from Gorkov. Frustrating, I'm sure, for him. His side hasn't had more joy going forward. Free kick for the French. It's Tulalan. Standing over it, although he makes way now for... Uh, Hobbling Gorkov. To be an outcast with AC Milan, Johan Gorkov, but has flourished back in his homeland with Bordeaux this season. He's only on loan, Milan still have his rights. Gorkov's service. Met by Einzer. Oh, it's a good ball into the middle. He really has every right to think that his forward players or the big defenders should be attacking that ball. A comfortable header away. Jonas Gutierrez at full stretch. It's clearance. Went skywards. Gago trying to bring it down. Diara so typically not letting it happen. Apart from that one slaloming run from Lionel Messi. Argentine heavy hitters up front have been kept quiet. Oh, I don't think Messi's touched the ball, has he, for 10 minutes? He really is a player that needs the side to control possession, then he can make his movements, find the spaces, and get involved. But really, Argentina have been on the back foot. They've seen very little of the ball. It's amazing, really, that. Uh, so many people were writing off Thierry Henry, wasn't it? Uh, still only 31. And uh, enjoying a simply splendid season with Barcelona as part of that heavy hitting Barcelona side. He's scored 102 goals in all competitions. And he's had a tough time. Emiliano Papa, the left back for Argentina. He's had a real difficult time against Sanya there, the right back, and also Ribéry. The French have had plenty of joy out this side. Well, Maradona talked about the need to contain the big three, as he saw it, Henri, Nelka, and Ribéry. They've had their hands full right from the outset. Gorkov. Looking at those in front of him again, delivering what to be a potent free kick. It certainly was, it's right where he wanted to be, behind those defenders. Next is hoisting his cross, but it pops out to Gorkov. Under pressure, and duress from Gutierrez and Gago. Again, they're using his arms for leverage, getting up in the air, heading the ball away. Thierry Henry's not keen on those type of challenges. I'd rather receive the ball on the floor. Oh, the touch inside, it was a wild swing from Gabriel Einzit, which seemed to catch player rather than ball, but it was an incidental contact. Well, there, look at that. Einz is trying to clear the ball away. He realizes he's not going to reach it. In all fairness to him, he tries to pull his left foot away. It was a clumsy challenge. Finally, a chance for Argentina to the defensive breather. This is Messi. Sania needing some defensive help, and it arrives, but he's found Papa. He tees it up for Mascherano. Javier Mascherano has only ever scored twice for his country in 45 appearances. That was a good little ball from Messi. Papa, the fullback, making that run forward. And as you mentioned, 
Just slice him across this one, Mascherano. Got to be careful, the French, though, because Argentina are going to be very, very lethal on the counter-attack. I'll stay with us here at half-time. We'll have a full uh, Mexico-United States preview. Something that uh, JP and John Hart have put together for us. Here in Columbus, getting ready for the big World Cup qualifier later on this evening, which you'll see here on ESPN2. Lionel Messi trying to turn on the Jets, but it's uh, going to be a yellow card, I believe, handed out here by the Swedish referee Jonas Eriksson. It's going to go to William Gallas. This is the challenge. Look at the sliding in as Leo Messi just knocked the ball away, I think. We'll get a replay. Yeah, there he comes. Messi just nicks the ball away from him. Oh, Messi standing over. Resulting free kick. Maxi Rodriguez is there too. Five to aim for at the edge of the area. It's Rodriguez who delivers it. And a very decent defensive header from Philip Mexes. Well, it was. Just looked like the ball was going to beat him. The Michaelis it was coming in behind. The French napping with a quick and short corner kick. Right across it goes to Emiliano Papa. They found Jonas Gutierrez. Well, he had to dig the ball out from under his feet there, Gutierrez. And in the end, the shot was straight at Mandanda. But he did dig it out, didn't he? He got out of his feet just any a little bit further into a corner, great chance of scoring, but as it was, straight into the arms of the keeper. Steve Mandanda, who's had precious little to do, he might have something more to do here. Aguero is on the move and now needs some help, which is arriving. It's Gutierrez again. And he goes for goal and finds it. Jonas Gutierrez with his first international goal for Argentina. And despite being on the front foot for almost the first half, France trail to Diego Maradona's side. Well, this time Gutierrez finds the corner, maneuvers the ball onto his right foot, Near post, got to look at the goalkeeper there, should never really get beat there at the near post. Just slow to get down the ball, maybe jumps a little bit off the turf. But even before that, in the build-up, I thought he should have been off his line with a long ball. Aguero was through, got to the byline, is expecting Mandanda to come out and clear the ball away. As you mentioned, been up against it really for the majority of the first half, but score against the run of play. And wouldn't you know it, perhaps the surprise selection in the Argentine 11 comes up with the go-ahead goal. Jonas Gutierrez as Thierry Henry skies an attempted immediate reply. Yeah, in all fairness to him, I think the ball just jumped a little bit. Here's the strike again, it's decent power. Really, you'd expect your goalkeeper to stop that one. that little bit of space to get the shot away but even earlier in the build-up I thought that could have been snuffed out Mandana should have been off his line to clear the long ball up to Aguero that was a different sort of test for the French side so Mandanda perhaps have some uh, questions to answer the inquest to that goal is that so little to do in this first half Robbie well he has but that's the sign of a very good goalkeeper. You stay concentrated on your toes, ready to spring into life at any second. Now, Eric Abidal, what will that do to the uh, French rhythm and flow to their game, which uh, they certainly had to 
motoring along very nicely. Pause for thought for Ryman Dominic. Well, they want this team to continue in the same way. The flow is there because they work very hard without the ball to stop this Argentinian side from playing. They've got to continue that. Can't let the workload drop. As so often happens, goals change games. And all different picture of possession now as Argentina stroke the ball around comfortably. This is Messi. Gago. Di Michaelis to Mascherano. Isn't it the difference? Just starting to find each other now in the little spaces. Here we go again. Gutierrez with Messi arriving and wanting it back. Gutierrez giving it back. Messi kept alive by Maxi Rodriguez. This is Zanetti. A fierce drive from an acute angle. Safely held by Mandanda. Decent effort. Just didn't know whether he was going to just try and bend that ball in behind the defenders. Answered his chances and took the shot on. Inside the final minute of the first half, France will be wondering just how they're on the wrong end of this 1 0 scoreline. In the ascendancy for a good half an hour in this game, Nicholas and Nelka. Seeing the one clear cut opportunity that came their way. And here's Papa. Courage to get forward at every opportunity. And now he's going to have to get back as Diara has picked his pocket. Chirano, though, wasn't going to let Gorkov turn and get away. No, he's very much waiting for that ball, read the pass coming into him. So it's Jonas Gutierrez's goal that separates the sides at halftime here at the uh, Stad Velodrome. So far, so good for Maradona. And remember, stay with us at halftime here on ESPN. A full preview of the USA uh, Mexico World Cup qualifier to come later on. We'll have uh, JP and John Harks uh, bringing you that. And also, if you didn't see it from yesterday, the goals from the Brazil Italy friendly that was played at the Emirates Stadium in North London. That really was something very special indeed. All that to come at half time. Final round in World Cup qualifying begins in Columbus, Ohio at Columbus Crew Stadium as Mexico and the United States get ready for another important match. In this final round, there are six teams left in this region. It's a round-robin format, home and away matches, a total of ten games. The top three will advance directly to the World Cup. The fourth-place finisher enters into a two-leg playoff versus South America. But USA versus Mexico, it's all about the great rivalry. Here's what the U.S. players think about it. There is so much tension surrounding the game. I think you can see it. You can see it in our eyes. You can see it in their eyes. You know, it's n neither team walks on the field and pretends as if uh, this is, you know, business as usual. It is a different game. I think the atmosphere is incredible. You know, it's a game you look forward to because as a player, you like to play in these games. Um, the big ones, the rivals, um, you know, when the spotlight's on, then uh, you, you want to shine. So uh, starting off with Mexico, it, it just kind of gets the weight out of the way, and it's, uh, we're right into it, and it's bam, there's, there's nothing. This is World Cup qualifying now. And these are special games for players like Landon Donovan of the United States, and you can tell just by the way he gets results against Mexico. Well, absolutely, JP. And when it comes down to getting the results and stepping in and stepping up for his team, he has proved it time and time again. He's been basically a thorn in Mexico's side, and not just with his finishing, but his skill, his tenacity, and again, the adrenaline. You put that uniform on, you know what's expected of you when you play in the big games, and he shines in those occasions. And Sanchez, you know, we talk about, you know, 
what that rivalry means? Well, there you go. A little bit of viciousness on the part of Sanchez, and that comes out in the players on the field. In the last round of World Cup qualifying, certainly Mexico had their problems. They barely made it just in terms of goal differential. What went wrong for them in qualifying? Well, there were so many things, JP, and we talked about the shape of the team, the tenacity that wasn't there, uh, that wasn't present from one game to the next, and those, those results really hurt their confidence. And now it's up to Sven Goran Eriksson to lift this team, to give them the discipline that they need to at least even challenge a United States that's favorite tomorrow. Well, of course, you know, when you talk about these two teams and how important this matchup is, well, each of these players stand out for me. Pardo, well, he's going to be dictating in the midfield. Very technical on the ball. He dis he's very disciplined as well, and he dictates the pace of the game. And Tim Howard, what can you say? He is the rock for the USA. Has been a leader on and off, and he's going to have to be a big-time guy in these type of matchups. It's the final round of World Cup qualifying, the USA versus Mexico, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. I say a rare meeting between France and Argentina. Yesterday, there was a rare meeting in North London, of all places, between Brazil and Italy. The two nations have won the World Cup more than any others, and it really was uh, something to say. I've got the highlights for you now, in case you didn't see any. Ronaldinho and company didn't take long to click into action in this game. A wonderful flowing move, and Elano was on the end of it to give Brazil the lead. Yeah, fantastic one-touch football, wasn't it? Clever finish at the end, Robinho is with the through ball. Excellent play, and what a good composed finish that is as well. And if that was good for number one, what about number two for Brazil, which arrived just ten minutes or so later? This is much more of a solo effort though, Robbie. Robinho picking the pocket of Pirlo, doing the rest himself. Talk about somebody just scoring a goal for you out of nothing. Pure ability, talent. Magnificent goal that is. You know his skill and his ability. He's got three players around him. He's going to come over. Just manages to manoeuvre the ball enough to get it onto his left foot and pass it forward. What a goal. Now, in another international game being played tonight, it's at Norway who have the shot lead against Germany. The breakthrough arriving just after the hour from Christian Grinheim. And that is the latest score to bring you from Dusseldorf there. The other games. I've seen a win for Chile against uh, the World Cup host South Africa. Uruguay also beating Libya. And all the other games uh, still in progress. Spain against England to come later on. Oh, talking you through the meaningful moments of the first half here in Marseille. This is perhaps the best we saw from Messi and Aguero. as Lionel Messi. It's a slashing run into the area, but Gallas... Uh, Getting himself in the way. Yeah, good play. Initially from Sergio Aguero, brought the ball forward, finds Messi, and made a very good diagonal run, allowing the space for Messi. France dominated, and this was uh, the best opportunity that fell their way. Nicolas Inelka, though, denied by Juan Pablo Carrizo. And they paid the penalty, didn't they, just uh, four minutes before the break. Was, uh, a loose ball chased down by Aguero. And when help arrived, the ball eventually arrived at the feet of uh, one Jonas Gutierrez. His effort should probably have been saved at the near post. Not sure about probably, should definitely have been saved. Sang is doing his best to close the ball down. You expect a goalkeeper to save those shots, as simple as that. Delight for Diego Maradona. And Argentina, despite being under the cosh for much of that first half, uh, actually enjoyed a fair share of the ball possession and have a 1-0 lead heading into the start of the second half. Argentina's first appearance here at the Stade Velodrome since the World Cup quarter-final in 1998, which they lost to the Dutch by two goals to one. And as I mentioned, the French national team playing here for the first time since 2000. The Stade de France very much their home venue. This is a venue more of a rugby venue in recent years. They really love the round ball here too. It's the home of uh, Olympic Marseille, perhaps uh, the club with the most fervent support in all of France. And uh, an international friendly with uh, so many appealing aspects to it tonight as Javier Zanetti and Javier Mascherano lead out Argentina. 
you know, a little later on tonight, uh, Robbie, we're going to be watching a Mexico side go up against the United States. A Mexico side have been struggling in World Cup qualifying, albeit with a whole new chapter about to start. And both these sides, it seems almost inconceivable to think of a World Cup without them. Yeah, it would be inconceivable. And I think Argentina, even though they haven't been playing too well in qualification, they should qualify. It's the top four teams are going to qualify automatically. They're amazed if Argentina don't find themselves in the top four. France, though, there's a lot of work to do in their group. France do have a record of missing the big event as well. They've missed four of the last ten World Cup finals, dating back to 1970 in Mexico. Then again, they have reached two of the last three finals, winning on home soil, of course, memorably, back in 1998. Just for the record, Argentina, in the modern era, have only missed one World Cup finals, and that was Mexico 1970 as well. Now, plenty of football to look forward to in the coming weeks as well, here on ESPN. Champions League is almost back. A couple of weeks until Karim Benzema and company and Lyon take on Barcelona. Manchester United will be up against the Italian powerhouse Inter. And the informs Latan Ibrahimovic. Villarreal, could they be the dark horses of this year's competition as well? As always, Real Madrid against Liverpool to boot. A magnificent game, isn't it? Makes a mouth water. Full coverage right here on ESPN will begin on February the 24th. The European Cup, as it used to be called, a, a trophy that eluded Maradona in his playing career. No success for him with the likes of Napoli and Barcelona. And so far, so good in his managerial reign. Game and a half played and yet to concede a goal. set for the second half. Be around to see if there have been any half-time changes. None immediately apparent, of course. Uh, international friendly so often see uh, the cavalry charge of changes, if you will. Managers uh, are not restricted to the number they can use, as is the case with competitive fixtures. Do you imagine that uh, on Dominic for starters, Robbie was saying to his uh, French players at halftime. I think there'll be certain amounts of encouragement the way they played. They press Argentina. They, I thought they controlled the majority of the game, apart from the, the halftime stats there saying that Argentina had more possession. I thought the French side did. Obviously, be upset that Nauka didn't take his chance. Karim Benzema, somebody that I imagine we'll see in the second half at some point. Yes, the one genuine opportunity for the French did fall to. Uh, Man who kept Benzema out of the starting lineup, Nicolas Anelka. Didn't see too much of him. On the other hand, we didn't see too much of uh, Sergio Aguero for Argentina. Well, no, we didn't. Maybe a couple of times on a counter attack, but mainly it was the French who were forcing the game, making Argentina defend and work hard without the ball. For me, it's going to be interesting to see whether they can continue that the French in the second half. French an early foray to Argentine territory. This is Ribéry looking forward with real intent. It was a fine tackle, though. And it's knocked out the way of Aguero, who rides the first challenge from Mexes, but bites off a little more than he can chew. Gutierrez there to help out. Sergio Aguero, of course, is ready to... Uh, Maradona's daughter, Giannina. Away by Mascherano. Aguero giving chase, but Max says getting involved. Mascherano was caught there. Come on, 
Nicholas and now get the guilty party. And now Zanetti. It was just been a constant. Whilst the surrounding cast has changed over the years for him. Maradona will see a little bit better sharpness in passing from his team. The French pressed well in the first half, but you'd expect the Argentinians to play around that pressure at times. They didn't really pass the ball, I didn't think, very well in the first period. Gago stymied in the presence of Diara. Messi hurdling one challenge. Pass from Gago though that brought the move to an end. He's in there to make a fist of winning it back. Gago still feeling the effects of the challenge that came his way. That's another one. Some lots of these hard challenges from the French players. Just reaches out a straight leg there, Diara. So dangerous at times. If you catch that, just on the top of his foot there. see Messi on the ball a little bit more in the second half, influence things a little bit more, maybe look to play through the centre, it's on that right hand side a lot in the first half, without much of the ball. Uh, the likes of Messi and Gago haven't even been born when Diego Maradona almost single-handedly drove Argentina to World Cup victory in 1986. They won it since. The final in 1990. Since then, the quarterfinal has been as far as they've gone. The side who are expected to do better than that in Germany. In the summer of 2006, it ended so disappointingly for them. And that's still viewed as a major motivation for this young side. Yeah, I think so. They've certainly got the talent, haven't they? Particularly going forward. It's a bit more of a question mark about their defensive cover and the players they have in the squad. Those holding midfield players, Gago Mascherano, Esteban Cambiasso hasn't been in a squad of Maradona's yet, but again, another like minded midfield player. They've got some real good talent. Lalan. The back of Isanya. Max is looking long and diagonally towards Frank Ribery, who's switched flanks at least right at the start of the second half. And that's Max Rodriguez there having to work back again to help his defence out. Ribery's corner. Parizo was at full stretch. And in fact, beaten to it by Mexes. It's come a long way, the goalkeeper there. Nowhere near it, really. Gets away with it. Mexes head is that on target. It's a goal. When you make that commitment as a goalkeeper, you've got to make sure you get the ball. Gago. Release Messi. Abidal reading the situation perfectly. That's been a theory, as far as Robbie, that uh, Argentina have too many creators and potentially not enough predators. Not a good old fashioned number nine like a Batish Stuta to stick the ball in the back of the net. Well, there's certainly an argument for that. They've certainly got that type of player in the holding midfield position, but yes, maybe a bigger. More of a physical presence as a striker they may be lacking. I think their style of play, Adrian, is going to be about build-up play, about intricate passing, combination plays, one-twos around the box. They're not going to be lumping the ball up to a big striker. Uh, and then Crespo, perhaps the most recent example of uh, that sort of out-and-out -out goal culture, but really around uh, the entire world of football, that sort of player seems to be going out of fashion. Now strikers have to be a lot more versatile. Yeah, and there's a lot more movement, isn't there, from front players now dropping deep, moving out onto the flanks as a striker to get the ball and face forward. The man Denis is on the bench for Argentina, maybe is a bit more in that role of an out-and-out -out goal scorer and not such a technical player. That's 
is the era, remember, when Sainz can be successful playing a 4 6 0 formation. Hello, Roma. The free kick for the French. As Tuleland goes over. And some afters as well involving Gago. Still that competitive fire burning in midfield, particularly. And Jonas Eriksson is going to have to douse this one. He is, I think Gago's been on the receiving end, doesn't he? Have a couple of tough challenges. Just trying to get his own back a little bit, maybe. To the line, the midfield player. What a dangerous challenge. He's obviously late, goes to ground, nowhere near the ball. Nothing malicious in that, really. Abby Dow. It's all a little scrappy, though, right in front of... Uh, Diego Maradona, who's out at the edge of his technical area. Hey. The stodgy start to the second half after uh, the flowing football at times we saw in the first. Again, some afters, this time Maxi Rodriguez. Mark on Diara, Ryman Dominic here didn't like it. Well, that's why we haven't seen much flow in football, Adrian. It's been, again, there's been plenty of challenges flying around in there. Oh. Abadal just hoisting uh, that forward. Free kick to the French. Ribéry and Toulalan are on the scene. And it's going to be Gorkov who takes command. Henri and Anelka are waiting. Gorkov service. Mech says and his presence to the attack as well. So to William Gallas. Set priests provide the road to recovery for the French Gorkouf. He's whipped in some uh, vicious uh, deliveries, but they've been dealt with every time. And now it's uh, Messi and Aguero trying to turn defence into attack. As Aguero had the rug pulled from underneath it, but he was away, wasn't he? Got brought down here. Eric Abadal, it was with a desperate lunge in the end. Normally be a yellow card, that I'm sure. And a quick counter attack, but so fast. Ball's given away in the midfield area by the French. There's a man who uh, scored his fair share of uh, memorable set pieces this time, though. Too far from goal. Mascherano just playing it short to Zanetti. And now Gago. by Mexes, job completed by Diara. Now Einzer for Argentina. Mascherano. Giving it away. Gorkov in on position to pick it off. Ribery getting it back. And it got down with a scything challenge. It's an easy decision for referee Ericsson. Just a little bit late there, wasn't he, Maxi Rodriguez? I'm sure not used to having to do so much defensive work when he plays for Atletico Madrid and Argentina. It's really having to work back and help out. Again, a 
another set piece for the French, just trying to whip it in behind those defenders. Big space there. Gorkuf with the same formula. It's dealt with by Carito. Not enough on it to find Gago. He in turn carries Argentina racing forward. That's a poor pass from Leo Messi. He really has struggled to get into the game. The odd flash, but putting the ball away a few times. Good goalkeeping that time. Words between Lainza and Gallas. Gabriel Lainza. A few Argentine players who's had experience of French football. Played with uh, Harry Saint Germain before moving to England. And can Ribéry keep this in? He could, but uh, actually, second thoughts. Couldn't quite get the job done. That's going over the line there. Almost might take a few substitutions to open this game up a little bit. Almost bogged down, isn't it, in the middle? Some very little really of all the attacking players. Guerrero, Thierry, Henri, Ribery's been quieter in the second half. Over the top from Tulalan. Nelka giving chase and getting there too. Once again, some uh, determined defending. Mainzer and Di Michaelis. Uh, you can see what he's trying to do there, just trying to feel that ball in behind, miss hit that through ball. Riggery uh, letting the ball do the work. One on one against Zanetti. Reminds it. That's Thierry Henry this time with a slight nudge on the defender. It's a clever ball around the corner. A nice touch from Leo Messi. And that was the miss hit ball. Former Manchester United man. Gabriel Einzer taking the free kick. Manchester United facing Jose Mourinho's Inter in the Champions League. Perhaps the marquee matchup of the first knockout round. Oh, look at that from Aguero. Beautifully done. Couldn't quite link with Gago, who was arriving. Di Michaelis mopping up. On at the moment, Argentina looking fairly comfortable in protection of this one goal lead. Good play, wasn't it, Sergio Aguero? What a great ball, though. Messi, I think, was a wider position that he managed to pick out. Now, Ribery putting his head down, and he's going to get the free kick. Zanetti with the infringement. Well, he gets to run Zanetti here around the outside. Very strong but illegal use of the arm, really pushing Ribery away. And another set piece, this time in a more dangerous position. Ryan Gorkuf again at the controls. Scored one of the goals of the season. Look it up if you haven't seen it for Bordeaux against Paris Saint Germain three weeks ago in early January. An amazing strike. This is Gorku for France. He couldn't quite repeat the trick on the national stage. He's trying to zip this in with so much pace. He just gets underneath the ball a fraction, which takes it over the top. Here's the jostling in the middle for position. Di Michael is grabbing two players. Just trying to block off players there, stopping their running, jumping for the ball. Gorku for uh, Anyways, is David Beckham in reverse? By that I mean he's owned by Milan, but has been loaned out to Bordeaux, and it'll be very interesting to see what happens at the end of the season. But he indeed returns to play for Milan. Sanya's yes, not going to get there. Donna who finally hang, hang, 
hang up his boots in 1997. He was on a uh, downward trajectory. The 94 World Cup imploded on it. The pressure is everywhere on the French, but this time it works out as Sania bursts into the area. The little step over was designed for Henri, and the follow up shot too high from Gorkouf. Yeah, There's a breakthrough there, wasn't it? Down that right hand side, they get in behind here. The fullback Sania just pulls the ball back. There's that reliable player, Javier Zanetti with the clearance, reading that cutback pass. Well, we're going to see a switch shortly. It's taken nearly, or taken over an hour, which is uh, almost uh, noteworthy in itself in an international friendly, but Karim Benzema is readying himself for action. Benzema in a moment as we look at Di Michaelis. And sending it forward, more in hope. Only real aim for Argentina. Diara was impeded. This will be a chance for the switch to happen. Who is going to make way? He's the obvious choice. Is number 39 being held aloft? It appears it is. It's Roman Dominic. It's a straight swap at centre forward. And Melka is off. And Big Benz, as he's known, Karim Benzema, has been one of the hottest properties in all of Europe, comes on. The Leon hitman. He was the joint top scorer in the Champions League this season with uh, five goals already in the competition. Yeah, a real talent, isn't he? Young player, young striker, exciting type of player. Nicholson now could just never really affected the game enough for me. Had that chance in the first half, but never really saw him too much in the build-up. A couple of crosses his way, but Benzema now has the opportunity. There's another in the long line of uh, French footballers of Algerian descent. Benzema just like Zinedine Zidane. Still only 21, astonishingly. Away from uh, Gutierrez. And uh, it's a full-time score now from Dusseldorf in a real upset. And another international friendly, Germany nil, Norway one. Progress held in check by Mexes. Yeah, good work from Aguero. We have to give credit to Philip Mexes. Really been on his toes in this game. William Gallas as well back there. For the most part, it's kept very, very tight to Aguero. Mexes uh, equally tight on Messi as that ball arrived. Retrieved in midfield though. Gago and company, Messi. Gago. Costa Jonas Gutierrez, the goal scorer. Messi working hard to reach the loose ball, but it's as though the last touch was off him. Goes down under duress from Diara. Well, I think the slip again. There was certainly an initial push. Just losing his footing there again. It's happened a couple of times with him and Aguero. The players have lost their footing in crucial times. They've got the free kick. I see Keep Keep on, Hilly with Robbie Musto alongside here at the Stad Velodrome. Midway through the second half, Argentina looking for the cushion of a second. Mandanda with a firm punch away. And a follow-up shot. 
Lynch to clip the roof of the net. It's way over the top from Gabriel Einzer. That's decent ball in. And Danda comes out, doesn't get great distance with the punch. And to Rodriguez it was with the effort over the top. Now Benzema's first touch is an exuberant one. Left Gorkov, a little too much to do though. Quieter as Nigolka from the second half, maybe under a little bit more pressure and work from those Argentinian midfield players. So much less of him playmaking, if you like. A lot more even, really, possession in the second half. Interestingly, like Frank Ribery, Jonas Gutierrez has so switched flanks. Controlling the left as well, that was Benzema's first touch. Nice technique, nice awareness, and the runner was going in behind him. Oh! Again, if you're just joining us, uh, a recap on the moment that uh, the shot separates the, the two sides so far. It was uh, an effort that Steve Mandanda won't look back, back upon with uh, any degree of uh, sentimentality, Robbie. He seemed to be moving one way and then try to get back at the near post. And it provided Jonas Gutierrez his first international goal and his eighth appearance for Argentina. That was one winger who got the only goal against Scotland back in November. Maxi Rodriguez, it's another one. He's done it tonight. Gago. Aguero. Need to turn. It looked impossible, and indeed it proved to be in the end, thanks to William Gallas. Well, Gallas had to be on his toes, you know, because this is very, very clever play. Good concentrated defending from Gallas. Messi, his way in from that right-hand touchline. It is so much of his good work for Barcelona. And Gorkouf. Argentina, Argentina team defence surfacing again here. Gago able to recover. No room to breathe for France at the moment in the middle third. Champions League action will be coming thick and fast in a couple of weeks' time. Chelsea against Juventus. Chelsea now to the uh, temporary care of one Gus Hiddick. And up against one of their former managers in Claudio Ranieri. <laughs> 20 minutes remaining in Marseille. The second half that is still really yet to spark into true life. It's not the flowing football we saw in the first half, but perhaps that's about to change now. Jonas Gutierrez. Well, he had the angle to deliver the cross. Papas worked his way forward. And he couldn't connect with it. Yeah, the couple of runners going into the centre. Sanya getting back and making the interception. Just haven't really flowed, have they? Let's say he's into the game at this point. Corner for Argentina. Maxi Rodriguez to take it. The near post flick on arriving. Max says prodding the ball away from danger. The meeting of uh, Di Michaelis and Benzema. The uh, being acquainted this season in the Champions League. They are met by in Munich. Lasana Diara for France, Henri underneath the loose ball, and now perhaps a chance for Ribéry to set them on their way. Back at 
Sanya, the Arsenal man. A soft cross to deal with, really. Argentina 1-0 and they've, they've looked good on the counter tonight but I'm still a little disappointed with the way they've generally played, the way they've kept the ball passable. Normally with Argentina you see all the combination play, the, the clever intricate passes, just haven't seen that quite so much. But on the other side of things I think Maradona will be pleased the way they've defended, the way they've worked in midfield to break up things. I haven't quite seen the real Argentina, I don't think so far in this game. The side that many people have labelled as the world's new Wow side. It's really been more of a back to basics approach for them. Just even in the last ball forward there, but I think it was Fernando Gago, just an easy giveaway. You just don't expect that from any Argentina players, really. Gorkov isolated and up against three. There was only going to be one end result. It's Javier Zanetti bringing the ball away. Really uh, produce a barnstorming finale here. Cross from Abidal. Sailed uh, straight out of play. Substitutes warming up Sandy and Nasri is amongst them. Messi to Aguero. And Mascherano nipping at the heels of Thierry Henry. And Dominic, who's into his sixth year in charge of the French national side. Well, that's a free kick, there's no question about that, Mascherano, just late on the ball. Body charge on Thierry Henry. Dominic was uh, saying before this game that even though it was Argentina, he was more concerned, of course, about the double header against Lithuania, which looms large for them. At the end of March, he viewed this game as simply a preparation uh, for those two that could be pivotal. And then get to the surprise of many, was retained back in July in the French Federation after their disappointing Euro 2008. They've got a thing you can't afford to lose. Any of those two games really. These two qualifiers crucial now. It's got plenty of games to go, but certainly they've got work to do. Another tackle, another free kick in that midfield area. There's one word you could describe the second half in particular as scrappy. And that's one thing you wouldn't think a game would be between these two sides, football inside, but it has been. Some silk to the steel with Aguero, but the simplest of passes went astray. The combination of silk and steel has been such a hallmark for Argentine football over the years. Sometimes one half of that equation having the upper hand, and sometimes the steel. Well, tonight is the steel. Normally, as you said, it's the silky part or the artist, if you like, in the team that take control of these South American sides. But tonight, plenty of industry from the midfield players. Gutierrez, Rodriguez as well in there. Not really enough of the silky soccer we expect from Argentina. They are preparing some changes, it appears. Goalkeeper Carrizo. Yeah. 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 
Maxi Rodriguez, who wondered where the whistle was. Steve Mandanda, loose clearance. And the Marseille keeper. With a jump to no avail. Now, World Cup qualifying resumes in the CONCACAF region. The United States against Mexico, 7 p.m. We asked you who was going to win tonight's game. Well, in the uh, Deportes region, Mexico getting 50% of the votes, the United States 39. 11 o'clock for the draw. In the United States, the vote rather different. So a long party lines, I think it's uh, <laughs> safe to say there, Robbie. Yeah. Oh, it's certainly going to be a fascinating game. So all enemies going head to head again. Always good games between those two. And such dominance recently, of course, for the United States on home soil. It's been ten years since Mexico have prevailed. Sanya. So, slowed down, hasn't it? The tempo of the game has actually become more and more genteel while the tackling hasn't. Yeah, and the majority of the boards as well have been trying to be forced through the middle, really. We haven't talked about or seen a lot of play in the wide areas, have we? Henri Ribery, Gutierrez, Maxi, Maxi Rodriguez as well. We haven't seen a lot of wide play. Okay, so now Ribery taking Gutierrez with it. To back pedal. Assistance available from Sanya. Needs a good cross. It's not a bad one, but comfortably dealt with by Gago and company. It's Gago. Have to tidy it up. That brings the ball down well here from Ribery. Just the end product wasn't that great. Is it going to be two wins out of two for Diego Maradona? That will be a subject for conversation on ESPN at Soccer Net Press Pass, our studio show. Plenty of lively debate, and you can see it in the United States on ESPN Classic. Friday at 7 p.m. is the time. So we are going to see a switch. It's an interesting one. Because Maxi Rodriguez uh, is going to make way for a man who's going to make his Argentina debut now. Marcos Angeleri plays in Argentina for Estudiantes. So, primarily in his homeland as a right sided defender. Also going to see uh, someone very different, and much more well known on the world stage. Carlos Tevez is going to come on for the final 10 minutes or so in place of Sergio Aguero. Hasn't been one of Aguero's better nights, has it? He failed to get involved too much, slipped around a little bit as well. As I said, a totally different player, much more of a high energy. Aguero will go and explain it all to the father-in-law, just happens to be Diego Maradona. And Tevez going to display his wares, but it's France who are on the move, and they've earned the corner for themselves. Ribéry is the focus of this pass. The Bayern Munich man who used to play here in Marseille who takes it. Stolen away by Tevez. His first contribution. And finding Messi. Messi on the move. Lionel Messi! Mesmerizing. Worth the price of entrance alone as he so often is, Lionel Messi 
With his 11th goal for Argentina, seals another victory for Diego Maradona. Well, again, it shows the speed, the quickness, the ruthlessness of the break from Argentina. Tevez this time bringing the ball forward. And he's got the supporting players there. Messi picks the ball up here with lots of work to do. And look at the way he just manoeuvres the ball away from the defenders, gets good power on the shot. Mandana can't keep it out. Oh, a sublime finish for Messi, wasn't it? But credit the good work from Carlos Tevez, who made an immediate impact, didn't he? Took a couple of defenders with him, and suddenly there was some space for Messi. Well, he controlled the ball, he looked after the ball and had his head up. He fed it through to Messi. Well, he's still 40 yards out and managed to score a goal with three or four blue shirts around him. Maybe a good sign for Argentina, Adrian. They haven't played fantastic football tonight, but they've been tough, been strong through the centre. And very dangerous on the break. That's been a, an immensely frustrating second half for the French. The shadow of the side who had Argentina firmly on the rack for about half an hour. In that first period, as you say, uh, the influence of Johan Gorkov has waned as he strives for possession against Mascherano. Yeah, also, you think about Thierry Henry and Frank Ribéry, you've seen very, very little of them in the second half. Able to influence things, get on the ball, attack the Argentinian defenders. Again, the ball's given away. Now on it goes this time. Diara driving on. And there's no assistance available. There always seem to be more Argentine shirts surrounding the ball. That's really been the story of the second half. And the chase is on for Messi. To be dealt with by Eric Abidal. They're enjoying themselves now with that insurance policy of a second goal. Fernando Gago, how many tackles has he made in this game? It has been a game for those type of players in the middle, really. Big performance from him, Mascherano has been solid as well in there. And Diada, likewise for the French. Mm, a sequence of passes broken up as the ball was given away to Henri. Thierry Henri. On the ground at which he scored his first ever international goal for France against South Africa at World Cup 1998. He's barely had a sniff of it in the second half. Well, is this result and this performance, Robbie, going to answer some of the questions that were still? circulating about Maradona's appointment. Plenty of people did question it. Well, maybe. I think there's still going to be questions, but you've got to say, I thought he might go in with a very much attack-minded lineup, but he hasn't. He's, if anything, he's gone the other way. Plenty of hard-working players in there. He realises the importance of having a strong defence. They're really coming into their own right now towards the end of the game. game in the center of the park. Look at uh, Messi's second in the park that Carlos Tevez played in the build-up. Just goes outside Sunny there, finds that space. You don't want to show him on his left foot. They can go the other way. Now Benzema. The initial effort was blocked. 
find anyone off balance with the follow-up. Over two hours to go. 7 p.m. Eastern will begin our coverage for you from Columbus. As the United States and Mexico set off on their uh, journey along the CONCACAF hexagonal. Which most people think will end up with both nations at World Cup 2010 in South Africa. and Argentina, of course, expected to be there too. Both nations with plenty of work to do to seal the progress, particularly France. And this isn't going to help Ryman Dominic's cause at all, this uh, end result, Robbie, which could yet get a bit worse for them with Angelero making his way forward. It's always a risk, isn't it, you play somebody like Argentina at home and the confidence isn't great could suffer a defeat and knock that confidence even more. But I have to say, the French in the first half, I didn't think were too bad at all. They passed the ball well, they worked very hard as a team. They've just been caught by very, very talented forward players on the break. Well, I think they have been disappointing in the second half. They really got into the advanced areas at all. Didn't really seem to be a plan B, did there, for the French? they fell behind. The switch was to bring on Benzema and Nelka. Okay, Ribéry and Henri sort of swap flanks, but that was about the extent of it. Yeah, he thought that some of the other players might have got a chance, Samuel Nasri maybe. David Villa has given Spain the lead against England. in Seville. the uh, closing seconds here. Marseille, most of the huge crowd, will be going home disappointed. I think what you'll be pleased with as well, Maradona, is the team has shown them they can dig in, they can dig in and work hard, even though they're not playing fantastic football and still win games. It's always a good sign. Giuliani. To Messi. Eric Abidal knows really too well. Messi is capable of getting in from that right hand touchline. The uh, Venezuela and Bolivia for Maradona and Argentina when their World Cup campaign resumes. Of March. This game at home in Buenos Aires and they travel to La Paz. Paraguay on the side that uh, lead all comers in South America at the moment. to work hard, hasn't he? Hassan Diara. We've seen very little of Tulalan and Gorkov in the second half. But Diara has tried, he's made a couple of runs forward as well to try and make things happen in that way. Henri to Benzema. It's all a little too fancy though, and uh, Messi. in his tracks. It's again Diara. The thick of the action. Uh, Diara couldn't handle the quick change of direction. Dribbling skills of Messi again. Marco, Marco. To enjoy himself now, isn't he? Diara and Messi will meet again. I'm sure the next uh, Barcelona. Real Madrid Classico. Uh, for tonight in Marseille, it is finished. It's another victory for Diego Maradona. Two out of two for him. And his side are yet to concede a goal under his stewardship. Two goals late in each half did the damage here. Jonas Gutierrez and Lionel Messi with 
Another splendid effort to add to his growing collection. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? It was a tough game a lot, particularly in the first half for Argentina. France really did come at them, but they showed that togetherness and the work rate they had. And of course, when you've got the type of players they have up front, they're always going to create and score goals for you. And that's been the case tonight. So Argentina move on to World Cup qualification in fine fettle. France, though, left for some questions to answer as it finishes here at the Stade Velodrome. France nil, Argentina two. Went from Lionel Messi highlighting this victory for Argentina. 2-0 they prevail over France. Two out of two for Diego Maradona at the helm of the Argentine national team. In this big international day around the world. Some other scores and latest scores to bring you. Um, victories for Chile and Uruguay away from home. Also Norway upsetting Germany. And Spain beating England at the moment by two goals to nil. Don't forget Mexico against the United States coming up later on tonight. Live from Columbus, join JP Della Camera and John Harks as uh, the hexagonal qualifiers get underway. That's all from us. I hope you enjoyed our coverage. It was a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Robbie Musto and all our crew working on this afternoon's game, I'm Adrian Healy. Thanks for the pleasure of your company.